In this video, we'll be learning how to approximate square roots. This problem wants us to place each radical on the number line. Remember what we said in our previous videos that square roots and radicals mean the same thing. So this problem, our job is to arrange each radical and place them on the number line. So what we need to do is to do our best in remembering our perfect squares. Now, if you do not necessarily remember what your perfect squares are, we can refer back to our table that we've created in a previous, a previous video. And so you can see right there that it's one times one. So radical one is equal to one, radical four is equal to two, three times three is nine, so square root of nine is equal to three, and so on. So please, um, if you do not have a table, Create a table of your own to help yourself out. And all it is is starting at 1, go 1 times 1. And then that's the number that goes underneath the radical. So I'm going to put that away because I think you guys are pretty well prepared and that you have memorized your radicals. So let's go ahead and start with the very first radical, radical 94. Now I'm going to look at that. We need to find out what perfect squares were before radical 94 and after radical 94. So we're going to go ahead and look at that. And so we're going to say to ourselves, hmm, I can see that 94 is close to 100. And I pretty much know that radical 100 is equal to 10. And so then I can move over here and say, therefore, radical, let's see, 9. So it's going to be between, we know radical 94 is going to be in between 9 and 10. So radical 81. So we see right here that we know that um, radical 94 is in between 9 and 10. But is it closer to 10 or is it closer to 9? So we can see the difference. What is the difference between 94 and 81? And that's 13. And what's the difference between 100 and 94? We see the difference is 6. So we can see right here by our example, it's going to be a lot closer to 10 than it is 9. So let's go ahead and approximate this. So it's not going to be in the middle. It's more than the middle. It's going to be close. So I could see uh, radical 100, 99, 98, 97, 96, 94, 95, 94. It's about in this area. So let's try this again. All right. Some of you might not have known this little strategy. But this is something that I learned when I was in um, my math classes, and I thought I'd share with you um, today. So let's look at radical 62. Radical 62 seems to be close. I remember seeing radical 64, and that's going to be 8 times 8. So radical 64 is 8, so we know it's going to be in between 7 and 8. So radical 7 times 7 is 49. So radical 49 and radical 64. It's definitely closer to 8 than it is. 62 is definitely closer to 64 than it is to 49. So it's going to be super close to 8 when we are approximating this on the number line. So I'm going to get it a little bit close. It's not going to be too close, but I'm going to get it really close to 8 so it shows that there is a difference there. Okay, now let's pick up the next one. Radical 42. Let's bring this boat in right here. So we ask ourselves, hmm, radical 42, 6 times 6 is 36. And then 7 times 7 is 49. So I forgot to put the 6 right here. And 7. So we know it's going to be in between 6 and 7. Now, whereabouts? Is it going to be closer to 6 or is it going to be closer to 7? What do you think? Well, let's check it out. 36, 42 minus 36, we're going to have to add 6 to 36 to get 42. And 42, we're going to have to add 7. So it looks like it's going to be a little bit closer. It's pretty much close. These two numbers right here, if they are very close to each other, that means it's going to be in the middle. Um, our last problem, we had, it was super close to, um, this number was really small and this number was really big. So um, we know that radical 42 or square root of 42 is going to be pretty much pretty much 
in the middle. A little bit less than the middle. We're going to go right about there. Now, this is all not exactly perfect um, because we're approximating. We need to just uh, be able to uh, approximately put it on the number line. Let's see 110. So here we go. Hmm, 110. Definitely radical is between radical 100, which is equal to 10, and 11, which is radical 121. So let's look at that. It is 10 away, and then 110 and 121, 11 away. This one also is pretty much in the middle, and it's going to be closer to 10, just a little bit short. So it's going to be right in the middle here and then a little bit less than 10, okay? And our last one, radical 31. Here we go, let's erase this from the previous problem. Let's go radical 31. Uh, looks like radical 25 and radical 36. So I see the distance between 31 and 36. I'm going to add 5. And 25 plus 6 is going to be 31. So it's going to teeter to just a little bit past the halfway point, And it's going to be closer to 36. So let's go ahead and move this down. This is probably didn't go out to 5 just a little bit. But it looks like right in the middle. And a little bit closer to six the integer six on the number line so all right the in our examples of placing each of these square roots or radicals on the number line we wanted to see where they fell in between the two perfect squares the perfect square below that radical and above the radical and then the, whatever that radical is closest to we kind of swayed it in that direction a little bit more approximation is absolutely just that just give a, a best educated accurate assessment of how close it is to the integer on the number line so um, work on these problems and hopefully you have a greater understanding of how to approximate square roots and place them on a number line mm -hmm.